morning. Um, we're going to be in Psalm 98. If you have a Bible available, if you have a Bible app, or if you need one, there are Bibles uh, throughout our room on some little tables around here. Uh, we encourage you to grab a Bible and to be in your Bible every day. Uh, we are in, again, our, our third week of Advent already. It's just amazing how fast this season goes. And in week one of our study of Advent, we talked about the light, the light that has come in the midst of the darkness. And last week, we talked about love, God's steadfast love, God's unconditional love that he has for not just me and not just you, but for all people, right? And boy, oh boy, did I get feedback after last week's message. And I love that. I love that you all are thinking and, and praying and having discussions about this because that's what we need to be doing. We need to be encouraging each other in our faith and in this journey. And this week, we're going to talk about this idea of joy, joy to the world. I, last week, again, I talked about movies. I, I love movies. I love going to movies. I love the whole experience of going to the movie theater. This morning, I need to talk a little bit about music. I also really, really enjoy music. I, I like all kinds of music. Uh, this week, I think it was on Tuesday, I came in uh, to the office and I was, I was humming Hall and Oates and was talking about Hall and Oates and I, I didn't realize that they don't really like each other, all right? They're going, going through some friendship issues right now, but uh, I love that. I, I love Journey. I really love Chicago. I was one of my parents' like favorite groups, and, and so I love Chicago. I love the different generations. I, I loved the 80s. 80s music, it's something about like the rock ballads of the 80s. Um, I just really, really enjoyed that time. I really enjoy Michael Jackson, right? Just a little bit different, but just his beats and, and the way that he evolved over the years. I really, really enjoyed that. I grew up mostly to 90s music, and I love 90s rap. I just, I love 90s rap. I, I love Jay-Z. I love Dr. Dre. I love Puff Daddy. I loved all those guys. I listened to their albums over and over again. Yes, I did listen to a little bit of Hootie and the Blowfish, but mostly it was really, really about rap. And, and you know, today I still listen to uh, just a lot of different varieties of music. I, I love Ed Sheeran. I'm okay with Ed Sheeran, especially like when I need some calm, chill music. I love him. I love The Weeknd. I love that. I love a group called Need to Breathe. They're fantastic. When I go to the gym, I listen to this group called NF, and it just gets me pumped. And I just love his lyrics and his vulnerability in his music. I love NF. I found this guy this week. His, his name is Forrest Frank. And Forrest Frank, I, I don't, I've never heard of this guy before in my life, and, but I found him this week, and, and what he has done is he has taken old hymns, and he has kind of remixed them uh, to some really, really chill music. And, and I love the words of our old hymns, the power of some of these hymns, and I love Forrest Frank's music that he has put to them. And so this week, I probably listened to uh, his album, his new hymns album, probably 25 times. It was just it was an awesome, I love music. I love the variety of music. I love the power of music. You know, the cool thing about music is when you, when you hear a certain song, it takes you back to a place. You know what I'm talking about? You know, I, 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 every time I, I hear the song that Amber and I uh, played for our first dance, right, it takes you back to that moment, it takes you back to that moment. I grew up in a very uh, it was a Christian home, but I would call it a very Christian home, very traditional uh, Christian. Uh, we, we couldn't go to movies, and now I love movies, and, and we couldn't gamble. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you I gamble, but, uh, it, but we could only listen to Christian music. And uh, I will just tell you, uh, uh, 80s Christian music is just blah. Like, it's just okay. Like, I thought it was awesome because that was all I was allowed to listen to, but it, it's just kind of like, okay. And I remember in eighth grade, I was invited to my friend Ben Clark's house. Eighth grade was just a significant year for me. And, and so I remember Ben invited me over to his house and we go down into his, pace, his basement and his dad had all of these records, these vinyls, is that they're called. And he put on this one vinyl, this one record, and it was this group called The Beatles. And the song was I Am a Walrus. 
And today, that is by far my favorite Beatles song is I Am a Walrus. And I remember again, I, I'm a kid who was only allowed to listen to Christian music, and then I hear the Beatles for the first time, and it's like something inside of me just like opened up, and I was like, this is music. I loved it. I loved it. And then we got into to Grateful Dead and Steve Miller Band. And, but again, as I start hearing some of these things, it takes me back to that moment, right? You know what I'm talking about. There's, there's certain songs that take you to a moment. Uh, one of my favorite hymns uh, growing up is Victory in Jesus. I love Victory in Jesus. The, the words are powerful. The, the music to it is, is, is okay. But I remember my grandfather standing mid-stage, belting out, Victory in Jesus. I mean, just as loud as he could sing, as off-key as he could be, he was singing victory in Jesus. And, and the thing that I will never forget, my, I, I love my grandfather, but what I will never forget about him singing that song, because it's been years since I've heard him lead that, is he believes it. He believes it. You know what I mean? It's, there's a difference when you're just singing a song to sing a song, and then when you get into it, into the moment. And, and my grandfather, every time he sings Victory in Jesus, he believes it, right? There's some gusto behind it. There's some assurance behind it that our God wins, right? Music, it, it does something to us that's special. We, we sang a song this morning called Joy to the World, you ever sang Joy to the World before? Of course you have. It's like one of the most famous Christmas songs of all time, right? So you probably sang that and Mariah Carey's song like over and over and over again. But Joy to the World, do you know that Joy to the World was, was not even a Christmas song? Did you realize that? There, there was a pastor um, in, in 1719, I believe it was. His name was, it was Pastor Watts, Pastor Isaac Watts. And he wrote this poem off of Psalm 98, and in the poem was, was the words to joy to the world. About a hundred years later, a, a Boston school teacher came across this poem, and he put it to music, and they released this song, Joy to the World, at Christmas time, and so it became a Christmas hit. But it was never designed to be a Christmas song. It was designed after Psalm 98. And although it, it does fit our Christmas season a little bit, it's also very forward thinking in what we need to talk about this morning. And so again, I would encourage you, if you have your Bible this morning, we're going to look at Psalm 98 together. We'll stop a little bit along the way and, and explain some things and talk about some things Together, But here's what it says in Psalm 98. It says, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. The, the psalmist, the, the music leader, the person who is leading this is saying, hey, we need a new song, right? God has been faithful and, and God in and, uh, Thanksgiving and God has loved us unconditionally and God has been faithful. But he's like, we need a new song. Like, we need new words. We need new adjectives to describe God because God is so good. And God has done so many things for his people. Amen? Amen. All right. Three people were touched by that. All right. But we need a new song because our God is so vast in who he is. He said, hey, we need a new song. He has done wonderful deeds for us. His right hand has a mighty victory. His, his holy arm has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. See, this is where it gets super exciting, church. This part right here where it says that his glory, his righteousness has been revealed to every nation. Sometimes we think about it's just for a certain group of people. Sometimes when we read the Old Testament, we think, oh, it's just for the Israelite people. But no, no, God's goodness, God's favor, God's righteousness is for all people. Isaiah reminds us of this. In, in Isaiah 42, he says this. He says, I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the hand and guard you, and I will give you to my people Israel as a symbol of my covenant with them, and you will be a light to guide the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind. You will free the captives from prison, releasing those who sit 
in darkness. The, 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 God just wasn't for the nation of Israel, but God was using the nation of Israel to show his goodness to the rest of the world. It wasn't just for a certain group of people. This goodness, this righteousness was for all people. And then the, the music teacher, the, the, the worship leader who is leading this continues. And he says, shout to the Lord, all the earth, break out in praise and sing for joy. I don't, I don't know how we ever, you know, had church services where it's just all quiet. And it's kind of like a funeral, like we just kind of sit there. And that's not how they used to do it back in the day. They, they got a little bit excited, all right? And he says, sing to the Lord, shout for joy. Sing your praises to the Lord. He says, bring out the harp, right? He says, bring out the, the harp and the, the melodious uh, song. He said, bring out the trumpets, the sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord because he is king. He got a little bit excited in worship, all right? Thank you. It's okay to be a little bit excited because our God is good. Our God has done some wonderful things for us. As we look back, we see God's faithfulness, his steadfast love that we have talked about in previous weeks. He got a little bit excited. He continues in verse 7. He says, let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the earth, all the living things join in. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their songs of joy before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth, and he will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness. That is who our God is. So, so here's the point of joy to the world, the song. Here's what Psalm 98 is talking about. He's saying, yeah, let's look to the past. That God sent his son, God sent the light into the world, the, the light in the midst of darkness. God has been faithful in his steadfast love for his people. He has heard the cries of his people, and he sent a savior, he sent a Messiah for us. Amen. He said, get the instruments together, get the guitars together, let's get the drums, let's get the beat, like let's do this. But also Psalm 98, the importance of Psalm 98, and I love this, and we can't miss this today, is it's forward thinking. This joy is not just in the past. This joy is also in the future. Think about joy just for a moment. Maybe you have experienced joy in your life. I think we've all experienced joy in our life. Maybe your life isn't perfect. Maybe your life isn't the way that maybe you planned it out to be. It wouldn't have been the book that you wrote. But we've all experienced joy, seasons of joy. Think about that friendship. I think about Ben Clark all the time. And then he introduced me to the Beatles. Man, that was such a cool moment. I remember making the team in eighth grade and getting my first pair of Nikes. Talk about joy, right? I walked around that, that hallway like a boss, right? Like I was just like, yeah. I remember when I met the girl of my dreams, right? I remember that first dance. I remember all those people looking at me and looking at the love that I have. I remember the grossness of each one of my children being born. Like I, I remember the joy of that moment, right? Looking back, there are these moments in your life where you're just like, man, life is good. Sometimes it comes through a movie, sometimes it comes through a song, sometimes it comes from a relationship or a friendship, but we have experienced seasons, glimpses of joy. It's easy to look back and say, that's joy. But sometimes when we look forward, we don't always think about joy, do we? See, we get, we get caught up in the chaos of our world. We cling to the what ifs, the what ifs. What if that happens? I don't know about you, but sometimes when I, when I lay down to bed, I, I start to scenario plan, right? I start to come up with all these scenarios of what tomorrow is going to look like and what next year is going to look like and what I'm going to look like as, as an old person retiring and what am I going to do with my time? When I can't sleep, I start scenario planning all these what ifs in my life. And I'll tell you, sometimes I get caught up of, what if this happens? And what, what, what happens if, if this happens to Caden or, or Cohen? Or what if they go through this? And, and all of this, and sometimes we forget that our future is joy. Why is our future with joy? Because he is coming. 
He is coming. The God who came once, the God who brought the Savior, that brought the light, that brought the steadfast love into our world, that God who sent a king for you and for me, that God is coming again. He hasn't forgot about us. He he sees all the chaos. He sees all the brokenness. He sees all the cancer. He sees all the disappointment. He sees all the isolation. He sees the depression. He sees the anxiety. And he's coming again to make all things right. Get the symbols. Get the piano. Like, let's dance. Let's talk about how good our God is. You may have experienced joy in your past, but guess what? There is joy in your future. There's joy in your future. Is it going to be easy? No. Is it going to be perfect? No. But there is joy because our King is coming again. And He's not just coming for some of us, He's coming for all of us. Those who are willing to turn their lives and follow Jesus, those who who choose to confess with their mouth, those who choose to believe in their heart that, yes, this God loves me. Yes, this God created a world for me. Yes, I have broken some of his commandments. and, And yes, I can live in perfect relationship with him because of his son. Yes, that Jesus is coming for you and for me and anyone who chooses to believe in him. Church, that's good news. That's just, that's joy. Joy to the world and joy to the world. Like it's, that's, it's so much more than that, right? It's so much more than that. And guess what? We haven't experienced our best days. We haven't experienced our best days. Our best days are in front of us. Why? Because our God is coming down to earth to free his people, to make things all, all things right and to judge and put things back into order the way that he created them to be. Joy to the world. Our Savior has come, and he's coming again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you looking forward? Are you seeing joy? Are you seeing hope? Don't cling to the brokenness of our world. That's not our future. Our worship or our future is, is, is stuck. It's connected to our coming king that deserves all praise for all eternity. Will you stand with me this morning? My prayer for you this week, and as you continue through these final days of the Advent season, is that you will experience the light. Again, we all come into this place differently and and you may feel like you're in darkness. You may be in spiritual darkness. You may be in relationship darkness. You may be in financial darkness. But you can experience the light. You, You may feel this morning that there is nobody on this planet that loves me that cares about me, that knows me, that knows what I'm going through, what I'm thinking, what I'm experiencing, you may be completely isolated in your mind. Your God loves you. Your God sees you. Your God loves you for who you are. We talked about it last week, this idea of God's faithfulness, his, his steadfast love for his people. And because of that light, Because of that steadfast, that faithful love that God has for us, we should have joy, church. We shouldn't be in this depressed state. We should be around here dancing around. We should be out in front of Walmart jingling that bell every minute. Skip, not every five minutes. Every minute we should be banging that bell saying, Merry Christmas, because our God has come and our God is coming again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this celebration. God, you, again, have been so good, and you have been so faithful to your people. God, for for years and hundreds of years and thousands of years, uh, humanity cried out for a Messiah, cried out for a Savior that, that would free them from their brokenness. And God, you heard those cries and, and, and a little baby, a, a king, that, this Emmanuel, this God with us that changed humanity, it changed our world forever. The lost were now free. The blind could now see. God, we are so grateful for the gift of Jesus. 
We are so grateful for what Jesus means to to so many in this room, those who choose to believe and and to follow after Jesus and believe that that he can forgive my sins and, and, and he still loves me even at my worst moments. Yes, Jesus loves me. God, I pray for those this Christmas season that that maybe don't know that, that maybe have never experienced the love of Jesus. I pray, God, that during this season and as we get together with friends and family, I pray that we would continue to think about the future, the coming days. When, when, When the family starts getting negative and they start talking about the things in the news and the things of the world and and the schools and all of the negative stuff, we can just stop them and say, whoa, joy to the world. Our God is coming. Our God is coming to make all things right for all time, for all eternity. God, help us to be the light. You chose the nation of Israel to to be the light to the world, that that, that people would see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through this nation of Israel. God, would you choose to use us to be the light in this season? That people would see something different in our lives, that people would see something different in our attitudes, that, that people would see something different in our generosity, that they would say, I want that. I want that in my life, that joy that they are experiencing. God, you are good. You are too good to us. Help us. Give us a glimpse of it. Help us to get ready for it. Help us to share it this week as you send us to places all over this community. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here today. It is so good to see you and have you this morning. But church isn't over. All right, we're going to eat together. We are going to celebrate together. So stick around a little bit. We'd love to have you. We've heard the good news. We've experienced the good news. And now we're going to eat and share the good news with one another. I hope to see you in just a few moments. Have a great day.